So the collapse of the Venetian capital is a big movement here for the Hungarian Empire because, you know, they're really kind of solidifying their dominance in Eastern Europe right now. I mean, what would be kind of interesting is to see if any of these nations in the East that probably had their sights already set on these two Hungarian cities next to the Goths uh, and Russia, if, if, if this is maybe going to detour their thinking or their process behind this, because, you know, Venice kind of contributes a lot of extra power to the Hungarian Empire. And um, I'm sure these kind of these two cities were being targeted for a while now. No one's decided to jump into it because remember, the Goths are at war with Bulgaria, but Russia is pretty free to do whatever they want right now. So um, I, I mainly think that it might be Russia. Now, the thing is, unless, of course, they, like, annex Venice, which right now it's the puppet, but that's, of course, because it's going to have nine more turns of resistance. Um, but it will be interesting. You, they need to actually pump out more military units to kind of detour the AI from declaring war on them. But I, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly how that would work. I mean, would this mean that the AI may be... I'm wondering if, if, if cities as well as population comes into a factor uh, if, if an AI wants to declare war on another AI. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think it's strictly military units, but um, I, I have a feeling that maybe this, this will obviously help out the Hungarian Empire because I do expect them to lose these cities at some point. I just don't know to who. Uh, but we'll see. I don't know. So Venice and Germany have peaced out and the Netherlands and Venice have peaced out. All right, let's go to the next turn. There's a whole bunch of wars going on. This has been an un, just an unstoppable, like, an, just, oh, wait, what happened here? Did Egypt grab another Sumer, uh, Sumer city? Yes, they did. Sumer are down to one city left. Jeez. That is ridiculous. The Egyptians are taking over all of Northeast Africa, as well as the Middle East is just being completely covered. Uh, I'm just waiting for the Hittite War. Now, one thing that we talked about uh, in, in, in the break, or I guess, uh, I'm sorry, in the last video, is that I don't believe Egypt has any uranium. And even if they did have uranium, it doesn't really matter. Oh, you know what? They're probably going to get some here. The Sumer might have some. But even if they did have one or, or so, the Hittites still have some themselves. And they need to get up the Manhattan Project fast. Uh, another ideology has been chosen. Uh, I'll probably check over the ideologies after this turn is done processing. That was Bulgaria choosing autocracy. Um, yeah, really, there's, there's just kind of the last few nations that are kind of picking up the last kind of few ideologies. Uh, we have also Byzantium building the uh, Eiffel Tower. So there you go. There you go, Theodora. So yeah, Byzantium's doing a pretty dang good job. Egypt and Bulgaria have peaced out, and Armenia and Venice have peaced out as well. Uh, and yes, the Kremlin was built by Ramses in, I'm imagining, probably Thebes, something like that. All right, so let's, uh, what was I going to check on? That's right, ideologies. Okay, so right now there's still, oh, well, actually, there's still a lot of nations that haven't chosen. Okay, so it is between order and autocracy. There's only, actually, there's, there's I forgot about that. Morocco and, and Germany are still going freedom, but we predicted that more than likely there'd be a revolution by the end of it. I'm thinking by the end of this campaign, we're going to see multiple revolutions from all the freedom nations. If anyone else just decides to go freedom, which I don't think they're going to see, I don't think, I think we'll see at most one more nation choose freedom, if, if any. Um, and then, yeah, there's obviously, you know, the Bulgarians just chose, just, chose to be autocratic, which is an interesting choice. But yeah, a lot of civil resistance. Uh, most of these nations are unhappy. So I'm thinking that order will ultimately win out in this world. Uh, but for now, these nations that don't choose order, you got to kind of look at them because, you know, the, 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 the nations that actually did choose order are not going to be too happy. And they might be like kind of targeted a little bit by some of these order nations. All right. So anything, anything else? No. Yeah, so uh, the ideologies is kind of, well, we still have, like we said, we, we still have kind of a long time to go, but uh, a lot of them are, are being cleaned up now, and and it is, like I said, we have to start anything, anyone that chooses order, anyone that doesn't choose order, we have to kind of look at. So Roman Carthage just broke out into war. Uh, now, both of these nations didn't really have much of a fleet, which is, I don't know, kind of interesting. I, I'm not sure why those, I think it was Carthage that declared the war. Uh, why she declared war on Augustus. I, I understand that Rome doesn't have the biggest military, but neither does Carthage themselves. So I don't think any results are going to happen in this war. Nothing too crazy should happen. Venice, I believe, is going to keep their, their city. Uh, it all depends on Milan here. Milan is kind of going after it, obviously, just off to the west. There are only a few tiles off to the west, so they could potentially grab this city, maybe kicking out Venice from the game. And right now, Venice controls the United Nations. Uh, they have eight votes in there, so... Pretty big deal. And actually, I don't know if they still have eight votes. We should probably double check on that because their since their capital was as has fallen, I, I'm wondering if that kind of has an impact. Let's go ahead and check on that. We have one more turn to the World Congress. I guess it's oh, it is the United Nations. Never mind. Um, it's just that button doesn't change. It's still the World Congress. Uh, okay. So embargo of England. The Egyptians are trying to enact, and Venice is trying to uh, ban the luxury of silk. 
And I actually, I don't think there's a way for me to check because right now these icons are totally missing. A lot of the mods as well as a lot of, of the uh, uh, Venice. So yeah, I don't think, I, last time I checked they had eight votes, but we'll have to kind of double check in a turn from now. Denmark and Rome have peaced out. No big deal there. I didn't even realize they're at war. Uh, now Denmark is at war with Morocco. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Denmark is at war with Spain. Morocco was at war with Spain. I actually think I think they might still be. The problem was in the last video, Songhai finally grew the courage to go after the Morocco the, the Moroccans from the south. And uh, bam, there you go. They just grabbed Casablanca, and they're going to go after Fez now. And they have certainly the manpower. I think they have the military and the manpower to take about two more cities here. Maybe grab themselves a coastal city, which Songhai has none at the moment, and he could really, really, really utilize. Uh, now, the problem is that Morocco's got a pretty dang good air force. Uh, but these uprisings, a great war infantry uprising nonetheless, is really, really going to help out Askia here. Yeah, that's going to help him out tremendously. So, I'm thinking that these guys, these units are going to be distracted. Uh, they're going to protect their capital. More than likely, I'm thinking they're going to hold on to their capital. Uh, no promises, but I would imagine that Morocco is going to be able to hold on to it. They still have units around, and if they need help, they can send some things from the north. I mean, a lot of this stuff is actually naval, but there's one cannon unit. I think I think they're going to be okay. All right, let's see what happens. Let's see what gets enacted here. It's turn 339 going into turn 340. Uh, I think we're for sure, no doubt in my mind, going to get to at least turn 400, maybe 450. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, we'll probably stop the campaign around turn 500. I'm thinking we'll do the same thing, since that's like the tr traditional time. A time victory usually ends, obviously. Uh, we'd stop the, the game at, 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 at 500, and uh, and I'll, we'll, we'll talk about that as we kind of approach that. We'll, we'll talk about victory conditions if we, if we don't have a definitive winner, um, because, I don't know, we'll see. We will see. Uh, I don't even want to discuss anything just yet because I've got a lot of things going on in my mind. I don't think I want to do a traditional info addicts victory because I don't know. I I'll talk. I'll I will talk about it later. But anyways, uh, the Armenians have chosen to go. Oh, autocracy! There you go. Good for them. And the ne the Netherlands have chosen Broadway. They've they've built Broadway. We should probably check in on influence though. Even though ideologies are now just still being discovered, we're still a ways away from. Uh, I'm sorry, not ideologies. We should check on influence. Um, but I was going to say, because we're just now still entering the whole ideological game, we're still finishing that up. Wow, England was embargoed, and Silk was banned. Uh, let me guess, England had Silk too, huh? Was it a big attack on, on England? Is that what we're seeing here? No, they don't have any Silk. I'm not sure who has Silk, but nonetheless, whatever, not that big of a deal, usually when that stuff gets passed. But, uh, but yeah, no, check on influence as we continue to go on for kind of more ideologies. I I'm very curious to see, you know, exactly where, where everyone's at. I know that Egypt's probably doing a, a really, really good job. Uh, and some of these other nations that decided to go order if this is actually really good for a possible cultural victory, um, having a world with a, a majority of people with the same ideology is nonetheless a, a very good thing for the cultural nations out there like the Netherlands and anyone, I guess everybody in this game, not just the Netherlands or, or Egypt, anybody, because there's only, it's pretty much only a cultural victory possibility. So that will be quite fascinating to see how that, that works out. Oh, I forgot about this city here, this Carthaginian city. They, man, Morocco took this over a long time ago. So yeah, things seem to be good. Um, that that great war bomber, that barbarian great war, no, great war infantry, I should say, uh, did distract them for a turn, it looks like. So yeah, Fez will probably drop. They've got plenty of, of artillery units. Well, I guess cannon units. I should say siege units. Um, they have plenty of cannon units, which are siege units, and then you know, great, great war infantry to continue to just press forward into Moroccan territory. The thing is, they're about to get flanked from the north. Um, there's Gatling guns, there's riflemen, there's, there's cannons coming down, going to flank these units, uh, but this is a pretty good army composition for the AI. Oh, there's not, there is an artillery unit here. So yeah, I, I think that they're going to take it over now, and they have themselves an Air Force, three Great War bombers, that's perfect, that's exactly what you need. Wow, this is a really well orchestrated attack from the, uh, from Askian's, the Askia's military. Askia's military, I should say. This is really good. I, I, I'm, I'm just kind of shocked. I mean, the placement of the artillery, the three great war bombers, the, you know, amount of great, uh, great war infantry to cannon units. I think it's all pretty good. And there it goes. So it looks like they're going to split up their sieges here, which is obviously, you know, number one thing, the biggest disaster there. So I don't think, I, I, they actually might not take any more coastal cities, or they might not grab their first coastal city just yet. 
Um, which might be a good thing because, you know, there's a lot of Europeans that have some huge navies in the, in the Atlantic Ocean or the Mediterranean, even in the North Sea. Uh, it might be bad if Shanghai had a kind of a seaport because right now they're safe. The Europeans are, have done a pretty good job at kind of building navies and stuff like that, and especially Europeans of the North like England, the Celts, uh, Scotland, things like that. I mean, they've done a really, really good job of kind of focusing in on, in on that aspect of the game, which I actually I really love. And when are the Celts going to go to war with somebody? I'm still waiting for that. I feel like, if anything, the Celts would go after England. Seems like England's not very liked by the world since they just got embargoed and stuff like that. Sweden is still holding up, but Scotland has made it to the front lines with three great war infantry. Uh, but Stockholm is at full health, so it looks like Sweden, again, is going to survive. I think they are. Even though Norway had a huge force, it's that Stockholm placement, man. Nothing, Nothing's going to take it over until probably the Polish uh, go after him because they actually have a pretty good you know, fleet here in the Baltic Sea. Um, and Poland, I believe, pieced out with France, so France is freed up to do whatever they want, and uh, Poland's running back up north towards Polish lands. Yeah, I, I'm really loving this part of the map. Ooh, Poland-Morocco. Then uh, Denmark and Russia have both given Venice a peace deal. Um... I'm really loving this part of the map. I, I absolutely love Hungary, Poland, and Germany's placement. Very focused, four cities. Poland's got like six, though. But yeah, very kind of focused, clean borders somewhat. Uh, the Goths even, too. The Goths even have like a pretty kind of clean thing. And there's there's some, you know, there's a few cities that are kind of mix-matched in here. But I, I'm actually enjoying this map. I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so another ideology. Norway's tried, decided to play it safe and go order. So yeah, I mean, that's... Only going to solidify the uh, order nations, and I guess in terms of their power in this world. Let's see if the Goths take over this Bulgarian capital. This seems to be probably one of the biggest attempts they've they've done so far. Uh, it really depends. It seems like the AI sometimes attacks and then moves back the next turn, which is you know not the most ideal way you'd want to take over a city. But uh, yeah, I think the problem right now is they don't have enough artillery units, and they might be behind in technology. I'm not sure. The cannon units can do obviously you know they they're good. But they're never going to be, you know, ultimately, artillery units are just really game-changing. Maybe not so much for the AI, though. That that Sunghai movement, the Sunghai uh, artillery unit three tiles away was probably the first time I'd seen a well-placed artillery unit in a really long time by the AI. Usually they put artillery units two tiles away from a city, and that just, you know, obviously makes my eyes want to bleed because I hate that. You're not you're, The AIs don't know how to use them. The yeah, Tites have pieced out Venice, so Venice is... Lucky. Uh, now, one thing that I was talking about was that ASCII now gains control over a whole bunch of the uh, Moroccan unique tile improvements. So we'll have to wait and see if that benefits them at all. So far, they've this has been a pretty successful war on their part. They still have a pretty big military left over. Now, the Moroccans do as well, uh, but Morocco is still going after Iberia. Denmark, by the way, has kind of stopped going after Spain. I don't know if they decided to just abandon that campaign or what. Uh, now, Morocco has pretty much just an air force, though, that's kind of keeping them alive, keeping them safe. Besides that, they're, yeah, not doing super well, I guess, to say to say the least. Uh, Carthage and Rome, really kind of nothing happening here. Now, is Egypt going after that final Sumer city? They somewhat are, and not really. I, You know, we just saw those uh, air force units, those aircraft units, kind of come up to the northernmost part of the newly acquired Egyptian lands. So they might... But this would be really difficult, and man, that would be bloody. There is only one tile here for a melee unit that could take over this final Sumer City. I don't think anyone's going to do it unless uh, maybe Russia starts to really spam out units in the Caspian Sea, which is honestly a pretty smart idea. If I was the AI, that's what I would do. Take out Sumer, take out the final Ottoman City, and then boom, control the Caspian Sea. Uh, and that way, you know, you have a... I mean, I guess there's only one Egyptian city now that, that borders the Caspian Sea, but I think it would be really, really helpful... Especially if they just control this land here, this very small sliver of land. You could do some major damage with, with battleships just in the Caspian Sea. That would be actually very kind of interesting to see an AI kind of navigate that sort of thing. Russia's obviously doing pretty amazing. They've got a whole bunch of their unique units, but they haven't really done too much uh, colonization. Now, Germany has done, has done some really late-game colonization with Cologne. They also picked themselves up a, uh, a colony in northern Africa just south of Carthage. Pretty smart of them. Milan's joining up against the Sumer, and Denmark and Spain and now have just pieced out. So the next uh, United Nations will convene in five turns. The embargo of Poland and the world religion of uh, Buddhism. Let's go and check in on that. It's been a while since we checked on religion, hasn't it? 
I have no idea what it is. So Buddhism is winning. And remember, oh, there you go. So that's another positive for Hungary. Uh, that's going to give them and the, the nations, pretty much Eastern Europe, a lot of extra voting power. Um, and it will take some away, I believe, from from Egypt, who I think is, is predominantly Islamic because they stole Mecca away from Arabia. I think that's how it is. Uh, now, Hinduism is doing a very good job. Uh, Norway's Hinduism is doing a really good job with 22 cities under their control. Uh, so are the Celts uh, with Catholicism in Western Europe. But yeah, this is, I think, more than likely, I think this will get passed, but maybe not. It depends on the other policy. Now, the other policy was to embargo Poland. I'm not sure exactly how many other nations hate Poland, but that would be a big, uh, that'd be a big deal, especially for kind of the heart of, of Europe right here. Because, I mean, Poland would be, they're going to be in trouble. I mean, they're not going to be able to trade with anybody, obviously. And, uh, I mean, yeah, that would be that would be a pretty big deal. Oh, man, that would be, I don't know, that would be pretty huge. I mean, it was pretty huge, I should say, when, when England got embargoed, but usually the AI tends to do okay. Wow, I didn't realize how many naval units they had the, in the English Channel. Jeez, they've just mass-produced these ships of the Lions. I, I want to see the Netherlands versus versus England right now. How amazing would that be? Milan and the Netherlands, okay, so they might be trying to move down that towards that territory. Uh, you know, I, we might see maybe Switzerland join up against Milan. That would be kind of a big deal. Rome's got their hands full, and actually Rome is just not that strong. They have a very kind of a weaker military. Maybe it's because most of them are kind of near the Balkan region. Maybe. Germany moving through Hungarian lands. So clearly they must have somewhat of a friendship. They both have open borders with each other, I think. Great artist moving here through here. The Atites have built up a uh, uh, a wonder. We have Spain and Sumer piecing out, and then the Goths and Bulgaria piecing out. Did they take anything from it? Yes, they did. Boom. So that was probably a pretty good successful peace deal. Now they need to build more units from this newly acquired, you know, former Bulgarian city. That way they can attack from the south. That They have a lot more luck, I think, from attacking from the south. Right now they're getting confused because of the Black Sea that's in their way. Uh, but, yeah, no, this would be... This is this was a smart pickup for the Goths, and again, it's only kind of going to I think ultimately unite the the borders a little bit more. Now, one thing is you got to be thinking Hungary and the Goths that might break out soon. This is a perfect city for Hungary to take. It's completely undefended, and uh, and you know the Goths just got out of war, so you know they've lost you know a few military units. Where Hungary, you know they've they kind of you know they kind of also just got out of their war, but they that was a very successful war in their part. They didn't lose that many units. They dominated it, and they got lucky because other people joined in. Denmark and Byzantium. All right, that's interesting. No, so Byzantium was the one that declared that war. There's no Danish cities in this region. Oh, now there we go. Back to Western Europe and Western European wars. That's a big one. Because remember, Denmark can, you know, has a pretty strong hold here. I'm wondering if someone else is going to join in. Someone like France is kind of what I'm, uh, I'm thinking about here. I wonder if France is going to... Armenia, Bulgaria, Armenia, and Russia. I think Armenia is going to be safe. Right, this is the second time Russia is going to attempt to try this. Although, look at all these lands they've stolen away. Now, the first time we saw them do this, they didn't have these citadels. I don't know if that's going to help out that much, but it's still going to be... Yeah, it's, I don't think it's going to help out that much. I just, just noticed the citadels right now. The Goths in Armenia, that doesn't mean anything because Armenia is not coastal. No coastal cities in the Black Sea, I mean. The Goths are like kind of the other power i guess in the black sea besides obviously byzantium all right guys well i'm gonna have to stop right there though thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys next time